Hi guys! So I know I haven't finished the magpie and I fully intend to make another video and finish the magpie and show you its feet and its perch. Um, but I'll tell you what, I was, in, I was in town the other day and I decided to buy some food for our little feathered friends outside and here in England they sell these coconut halves and the coconuts are packed full of bird seed and suet. And so I hung them up outside and, um, you know, just basically to see what I could get on a bush in the back. And um, the garden robin and various blue tits kept uh, flying around and taking turns and, and knocking each other off and so on. So I really got into watching them. They were great birds. And I went for a walk in the meadow. And in one little corner of the meadow is um, a particular little pile of rubble. And... In that pile of rubble, I don't know if you can see from the photo, is some brick material and also a sort of a metal pipe piece or something, like a little metal piece. And that is serving as an anvil for a song thrush. Do you see, if you scroll back up um, or take a look later at um, the photo, you see all these snail shells around that. And that means that a song thrush has picked that little piece of land as its place to hammer nails or snails um, apart and eat them. That's what they do. They've got this flick of the head thing where they just shatter the shell and then they pick out the snail from inside and eat it without garlic butter. Yeah, I know. Anyway, um, it's called a thrush anvil and only song thrushes um, do that. And so I was looking around and looking around in the meadow and I couldn't find a song thrush at all, but a missile thrush came flying past and I thought, well, this is really cool. Well, one thing, it's Christmas and so mistletoe, missile thrushes, you know, that sounds absolutely perfect. And second thing, it's bigger than a song thrush, and it eats slugs, but it doesn't really eat snails. It eats slugs and worms and bugs and things like that. But I don't care. It all fit for me. So, um, so I decided to paint a new painting, or start a new painting, of a missile thrush. I've never painted one of these guys, at least I don't think so. I think I've painted a song thrush. Um, so I chose one of the, one of the Mendelssohn pages, um, the one that has... Allegretto on the top, which means with some, you know, force, with some action, which is what I think these guys do anyway. Uh, yeah, and so I, I drew out one in flight because I saw him flying past, and he's got one of those woodpecker flights, you know, where they fold their wings and they drop and then they stretch their wings out and flap a bit and climb and then fold again and drop, that kind of swoopy flying action. I think it's hilarious. Um, anyway, so I, I drew him, sketched him out on a transparent piece of paper, and then I sort of saw what size I wanted and placed him on this uh, precious notepad and paper and um, sketched him back out uh, once I was happy with the, with the size of him. I have to tell you something, missile thrushes, song thrushes, and all these other birds fall into the category of small brown birds for my mom. She recognizes eagles and robins and, um, you know, um, blue herons, and she recognizes crows and pigeons, but the rest of them just get qualified into small brown bird categories. So this is one of those birds, but I quite like it because it's got this mottled white and um, dark brown and black breast, which is really kind of fun to paint. I don't know. I'll see what I'll do with that. Um, so right now I've sketched it and, and I'm just cleaning out my eraser so I can get rid of the pencil marks. Um, I traced it over with the black ink marker, um, which is my usual go-to marker. 0.1 size Stadler pigment liner um, and now I'm taking care to erase the pencil marks from the future painting because it's not nice having pencil marks in it and I noticed that I, I don't know you guys once you use the eraser for a while it gets kind of gummy do you know what I mean like it picks up a lot of dirt and probably off this page probably the page is dirty from use so I have to clean it quite a bit do you guys use those knead erasers, you know those kneadable ones? Do you think they work? 
I don't know, I've never used it. I've always used these white erasers. I might start using something else. An architect friend of mine, she uses um, an electric eraser. Have you ever seen one of those? They kind of vibrate in your hand and they're like a pencil. That must be fun to use. Just let the um, electric, little electric motor do the work for you. But anyway, yeah, uh, this is kind of easy just to take out the dirt and have a clean bit of eraser to go over and get rid of the pencil marks. The watercolor sketch pad I'm using as a support for this page, well, I have to tell you a funny story. A couple years ago um, at Art in Action, I took a course in silk painting and I really loved it and I painted this little robin on this piece of silk, little square of silk, and I promptly lost it. I think I did a post about it. I'm sure I did about the whole thing. And then I promptly lost it. And I thought, oh gosh, where did it go? Well, it was in the pages of the sketchbook. <laughs> I tend to stuff everything when I'm here. Anyway, there we go. Um, outlined in black ink. And I have to choose the watercolor. And for this method, I'm just going to paint this bird, a little brown bird, like my mother would say. I'm just going to paint it all brown in possibly two of my watercolor paints, maybe three, I don't know, let's have a look, let's have a look at the map and see what I decide. Hmm. I want a medium value, not too warm, so I like that one, and that one, and this neutral one, that's a good one. Yeah, so I'm just going to pick up a lot of water in, my, in a bigger brush and uh, schmoozle it, schmoozle is an art term, schmoozle it in the watercolor. Just figure out where the watercolor is and put it down on my palette. And go again with another value. And maybe one more. And now I'm just going to fill in the whole bird. And it's going to be a little brown bird. I'm going to use the bigger brush because I'm not really interested in any details at the moment. I'm just only interested in making the bird um, brown. Anyway, the good thing about having a watercolor map on a piece of watercolor paper is you know which are the transparent colors and which are the more opaque colors. Um, so it's easier then to choose the ones you want as an as a background you know to serve as a background you've got to start somewhere so you may as well start with one color and with my method of using white ink i can always put the lights back i'm not really interested in preserving any lights on on this particular piece of paper because there really aren't any bright white white and if I want a bright white then I'll just put it back with the ink yeah so here we go we just oops we just um fill it in You know, you might be laughing about that photo of my video making contraption. Once I get back to Vancouver, I do have better systems to take movies with. Um, and here I'll try my very best to 
to um, make a few with my contraption. Actually, maybe I might use the Cannon Rebel. I can't. I don't have the stability to use the D6 in um, upside down mode like this um, here with this tripod. But uh, in Vancouver, I will. So you'll probably get a bit better quality than my iPhone. But I think it's funny. I think it's funny to try to do silly things. Well, there you go. Here we go. We have a brown bird. And now I, would, I have to put it aside and let it dry. Oh, I was just thinking, one thing I should probably show you is why you should never put ink on your watercolor palette. Okay, so here we go. Do you remember my mirrored palette that I dumped the ink on? Okay, I'll, have, I'll let you see this. Let me grab a palette knife. This is dried white ink, just clear white ink on the palette, on the mirror. And it dries like this. Do you see how hard it is to scrape up? And it will not dissolve, not very easily anyway. But on a mirror or possibly a tile or a piece of marble or anything slippery, you know, you can just scrape it off like this. Um, the funny thing is though, if you mix it with watercolors, that will rinse off right away. But not the ink on its own. So there you go, just use something else to put your ink on. I know it's a bit of a pain, but it'll save your watercolor palette in the end. Um, there you go. You just throw that off and rinse the piece of mirror later. All right. See you later. Bye.